What's up guys, Bearded Jeeper here, and today we're gonna be replacing inner axle seals. All right, the first step is you're gonna to wanna to jack up your vehicle and make sure it's on jack stands. You wanna be safe whenever you're working underneath your vehicle. You're gonna to wanna to put something behind the rear tire, a wheel chock, old brake rotor, something so your vehicle doesn't start to roll when you jack up the front. Once you get your wheels and tires off, you're gonna to wanna to take off your two 21 millimeter caliper bolts, one on the bottom, one on the top and then we can pull this whole brake caliper assembly off and we wanna make sure we support it on something so it's not dangling, not destroying any of your brake lines. Sometimes you have to fight with it to get it off. Next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you take off this little ABS wire. It's a little Allen bolt, I think it's like a five millimeter Allen bolt. But uh, make sure you take this off be gentle with it, they're easy to break and easy to snap off in here, so if it doesn't come right out, put some penetrating fluid on it or something, just so it can come out easily and you don't have to replace that. All right, once you get your wheel speed sensor taken off, you wanna take off this hub bolt, it's 36 millimeter. You need a really big socket to take that off. And then you have three of these 13 millimeter 12 point socket bolts. Make sure you have a 12 point socket on the end over here because otherwise you're just gonna round it off and then you're not gonna be able to get your hub off. So there's three of these. It's like a triangle, one up here, one in the middle, and then one down on the opposite side. Take all those off and you'll probably have to wrestle with your hub, but we can get it off. And you're gonna wanna turn the wheel one way or another. It just makes it a little easier getting to some of the hub bolts. That uh, center one there, that Eric's working on now. It can be a real pain sometimes. It doesn't like to fit a socket up in there to get it out. But if you turn it at the right angle and get the right wrench combination, you should be able to get it out, no problem. You're gonna wanna take your hub off. It probably won't come off as easy as mine because I take them off all the time to replace them. But uh, a neat little trick if you're having a hard time with it is you can take these hub bolts put them back in so they engage quite a few of the threads and then just start lightly tapping, uh, put a socket on the end of the, uh, the bolt here and just start tapping and do it on each of the three bolts and it should start to push it out a little bit and also spray a bunch of like WD-40 or whatever on the edge here so it'll come off and eventually you'll get it. It might be a fight if you live in a rusty area though. And the axle shaft will come right out. And this is specifically why you need a 12 point socket. It's not a normal six point socket. You got all those ridges. And if you try to use a six point, you're just gonna round it off and then you're gonna have a bad time. Real bad time. All right, so this is what it looks like when your axle seal is leaking. You can see all the kind of gross, nasty diff fluid and got a bunch of grease and everything built up and dirt built up here. So if you see wetness on the outside of your axle, your inner axle seal is probably shot. It's a lot easier than you may think. A lot of people get scared away because you have to take out the whole carrier and everything, but it's really simple, we'll show you how. Next, you're gonna wanna go ahead and drain your differential fluid. On the bottom of the differential here, there's a bolt, and you just take it out, and it'll drain the fluid. Make sure you have something underneath to catch all the fluid running out. And if your axle seal's been leaking for a while, you may not have a whole lot of fluid left in it. So you definitely wanna replace it uh, sooner rather than later. It's not flowing very fast out of there, so I don't think I have a whole lot of fluid left. No. It's all right. You're gonna wanna go around your differential and remove all of the 13 millimeter bolts holding it on, and then we'll just pry it right off. So once you get all the bolts off, you'll have to pry back the cover a little bit, get any remaining fluid out. Depending on how much RTV you have on there, it'll hold it up. 
That's why you want to leave one bolt in the top as well, uh, and then you can take out that final bolt once you get the case broke free, and then pull the cover off. So this is what your differential looks like. You have your bearing caps, one on each side. Now, this may be the intimidating part. A lot of people are afraid they're gonna mess up their gears or something, but you can't mess it up. It's pretty simple. Just make sure you take, just make sure you put everything back where you took it out from. So uh, these are directional. They'll have a little mark letter on here and then a corresponding mark on the side of your differential housing right here. And you just wanna make sure those match up, but one bolt top and bottom, on both sides, and then we can pull the carrier right out. And um, just when you, we take it off, there could be some shims or something behind here. Just make sure you keep them on the proper side and make sure you set it aside so you know and which is the top, which is the bottom, and you just put it back the same way you took it off, and you won't have any problems. Put one hand on your carrier, because it may come out. And you just set your bearing caps down, keep them on the same side as they came out on. And same with any shims. Make sure they remain on the, the same side. And you just drop one in the diff bucket. Goodness, it's almost empty. And you can take this off without removing the tie rod. You may have to wiggle it around a bit, but you can do it. And that's what your differential looks like. And now we can get in there each side, axle seals. We'll pop them out and get the new ones in. I have a socket stuck on the end of this pry bar and that's what we're gonna use to pop the old seal out. You stick it in your differential and you give it a couple whacks with a hammer and it pops right out. There it comes. And pop goes the weasel. And just remember, wow, that's a lot of dirt and mud in there. Remember what way the axle seal comes out so you know how to install it. But basically the, uh, the smaller diameter part goes in towards the, uh, or it goes towards the out part of the vehicle. It goes towards your tires. So it goes just like this. Make sure you take your time and clean out all this dirt and mud that may be built up in your differential because you don't want to put that back into your axle and screw up your gears or ruin your new seal that you're gonna press in. Make sure you clean that out really, really well. All right, so I'm pushing a rag in with that pry bar. Pushing a rag in with the pry bar, get all the crap from underneath the Jeep. And look at all that mud that's coming out of there. You definitely want to get all of that out of your tubes before you go install new seals and your axle shafts back in. All right, so to press in the seal, you don't need one of these, but it definitely makes it easier. It's an axle seal uh, installer tool, and it has it's supposed to have one of these on both ends, but Eric uh, doesn't have the other side right now, so we're just going to use a piece of steel. But basically, the way this works is it's threaded, and you undo one side and you tighten the other one and it pushes the seals right into place so we can do one side and then the other and uh, if you want to get one of these I'll put a link in the description below where you can get one and make your job a whole lot easier all right so this is how you put it onto the tool just slides right over this part goes into your axle and that part the open part there is towards your differential so let's go ahead and Place it in the tube, just kind of give it a light little tap to make sure it's kind of seated in place and make sure it's starting in straight because if it starts to go in crooked, stop, take it out. You don't want to have to, you don't want to ruin your new seal and have to replace it again. Because you see how involved this whole process is. 
just to replace two little seals. You hold one end still and you rotate the other end and it goes and it presses the seal right into the tube for you. If you're looking for the part number, it's 710863. It's National Oil Seals. And if you go to AutoZone or something, they never seem to have these in stock, but uh, they'll order them and usually have them to you next day. You want to have the, the right shim for the right side, set it up, get it all orientated correctly here. There we go. And then. See, it helps to have a friend. correctly you just want to start them loosely till you get both sides in and then once we get both sides in we'll torque them to 45 foot-pounds very important day we torque these Two. Three. Get on there. axle shaft right back in. Once you got the uh, your differential cover all cleaned up, you go ahead and put some RTV on it and uh, you go all around these holes and then we'll put it up, we'll let it set for a few minutes to, to really tack up, then we'll sit and cinch down the bolts and uh, we'll put some fluid in it. We'll be all set. That's gray, not black. It says it's black. Definitely gray. What do you guys think? Looks gray to me. It probably dries black. Don't be racist. <laughs> Tighten these in kind of a crisscross pattern too. So it torques down evenly. There is a torque spec on this, but I don't think I've ever torqued these. Go with the German version? Yeah, guten tight. Get a 
pop off your fill plug. Oh, that's tight. Fill her up. What a cheap Walmart cap is this? Effective product. Ah, I guess we're already full. guys that's how you install your inner axle seals it is really not as hard as it seems it's a really daunting task having to rip out the whole differential and everything and take out all your gears but it's only a couple bolts just keep track of where you take stuff out of and put it back exactly the same if you have any questions uh, post them in the comments below we'll get right back to you as always guys stay bearded stay jeeping I'm out shouldn't probably touch the lens but <laughs>